just want to check that mic's working for a start. Is that okay? Um, just want to say thank everyone for coming tonight. And uh, before I get started, I just want to give you a little bit of a background on myself and how I became involved in geotechnical engineering. I suppose uh, growing up, I always had an interest in how things were constructed and how things were put together. Um, a typical Christmas day for me would have consisted of waking up and building the latest Star Wars Lego or Meccano, and then getting into bed to watch David Attenborough's Planet Earth. Um, so as I went on to secondary school then, I uh, started getting more involved in a variety of subjects as you do, and had more of an interest for maths, physics, geography. And then the stage comes when you're about 16 and you have to decide what you want to do for the rest of your life and pick your A-levels. And um, a few of my friends, they had a real clean idea what they wanted to be, a doctor, lawyer, teacher, et cetera, um, whereas I didn't have much of a clue. And so I was flicking through the Queen's prospectus and came across uh, environmental and civil engineering. And this encompassed construction, design, planning, waste management, sustainability, and applying science to the real world. And to me, I went, it's probably the closest thing that I might get to Lego and planet Earth. <laughs> um, so I went, I went for it, and here I am about seven years later after graduating from Queen's University with a Master's in Environmental and Civil Engineering in uh, 2016. And I've been working as a geotechnical engineer in Arab for the past two years. So. It's not quite Lego and planet Earth, but it is quite interesting, and you'll get a, a small insight into it this evening. So just want to start off with um, what is civil engineering. Um, every day, you and I walk past buildings, we walk past roads, we cross bridges, we use energy supplies without even giving it a second thought. Um, but what have I said to you that this was all down to civil engineering? So. Civil engineering um, is all about providing and maintaining uh, the infrastructure um, that makes civilization possible. And by this infrastructure, I mean roads, tunnels, railways, bridges, uh, even sports stadiums here, and a variety of, of, of much more. Um, so what is geotechnical engineering? All this civil, enge civil engineering infrastructure has to rest on the ground or within the ground. Um, so the next time you find yourself in a tunnel, such as the London Underground, and you're wondering why this isn't falling in on me, or you're in a very large uh, building, like the Empire State Building, and you're wondering why it's not sinking into the ground, uh, give thanks to Geotechnical Engineer, because it is their responsibility to ensure that these structures are safe. Uh, geotechnical engineering is the science that deals with the behavior of soils and rocks. And it's the, the engineering story uh, between us as humans and then our topic tonight, planet Earth. Um, so in earlier times, geotechnical engineering was mainly based on trial and error and observational experience and uh, experimentation. Uh, but then a few problems started to happen and a few people started to notice stuff going wrong. One of these is the notorious Leaning Tower of Pisa. Um, so we'll, we'll actually look at the Leaning uh, Tower of Pisa here, which is a, a very historic building that we can, we can all relate to. And, <coughs> excuse me, and it's obviously famous for its unintended tilt. So in 1990, actually, the uh, Leaning Tower of Pisa was closed due to fears of it collapsing. And this prompted 13 of the world's best geotechnical engineers to come together to firstly try and identify why this problem occurs and then resolve, resolve the issue. And so the first, the first thing for them to do was to look at the history and then work out what was wrong. And this can actually be demonstrated by two very simple models. Um, so I'm just going to move over here. And before you get too excited, um, if these Christmas bags, Santa hasn't arrived yet. It's just, uh, it's just toilet rolls, so you don't get too, <laughs> too excited. Um, so we can start uh, constructing our tower, 
constructing it straight, and you'll notice that the material that I'm building this on is a firm, stiff material. So we can construct our tower, and up we go, as straight as we can. And you'll see that nothing is too, much, nothing's too exciting here. It just continues to stay straight, and it's not leaning, and it's not falling over. However, the ground conditions under Pisa itself are not this firm, stiff material. Uh, Pisa is actually founded on a very, very soft, compressible material. And I've got this pillow with me today. Um, and this represents this very soft, compressible material. So we'll start now uh, building our tower or the toilet roll again. And we'll try and build it as straight as possible, just like the, the masons would have done in the 12th century. Um, we'll keep going as straight as we can. Oops, by the way. And we'll continue to keep going straight. And you'll see eventually that this tar will start to lean due to the soft material. And as we continue to construct this tar, it will lean even more and still continue to lean until eventually, there you have it, it collapsed. Even that one stayed up and it nearly got knocked over. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, the reason for that is due to this very soft material that Pisa is founded on. Um, and you may ask as well, however, Ryan, I look at Pisa all the time and it's still standing. That is correct. And the reason for this is that Pisa is right at that critical height. If Pisa was constructed a few meters lower, it would have only lent a tiny, tiny amount and wouldn't really have been much concern. Whereas if it was constructed a few meters higher, higher it would have fell down centuries ago and it wouldn't be the Pisa we know, we know today. Um, so moving on then, you might be thinking, why, why is this relevant to, to us or to me? And why is this, especially why is this relevant to me as a geotechnical engineer working here in Belfast? Well. I could tell by a bit of the laughter there. Um, some of you may recognize this structure. And this is obviously the, the Albert clock in Belfast. And believe it or not, this is Belfast's very own Pisa. Um, it's not quite as extravagant, uh, but it is the principles behind why the Albert clock actually leans is similar to Pisa. Um, the Albert clock is founded on a very soft, compressible material known as Belfast sleech. And remedial action had to occur here to try and straighten the tar just like it was done at Pisa. Belfast sleech is a very, a very common material in low-lying areas of Belfast. And it was deposited due to um, the, the post-glacial estuary of the River Ligon and also the Belfast lock. Um, this, this soft material is spread, is spread out throughout Belfast. In, in some areas, it's up to 15 meters of a depth, um, especially in the Dockland area. And in the inner city areas of Belfast and commercial areas, you can find the soft compressible material from anywhere to three uh, to 10 meters of a depth. So looking, you might be wondering what this is. This is a map of the geology of Northern Ireland. And it's essential for me as a geotechnical engineer uh, to understand the history of how different uh, materials were deposited and then also understand their physical and chemical properties and then how they behave. This map's created by the Geological Survey of Northern Ireland, uh, known as GSNI. Um, GSNI are part of the the economy of, or sorry, the Department for Economy, and their staff uh, are all work for the British Geological Survey. So they, they help map, model, and monitor the ground that, that we live on, and they provide baseline information and data to help me as a geotechnical engineer design foundations, for example, for a new, a new building within, within Northern Ireland. If we look specifically at Northern Ireland, Although Northern Ireland only represents not point not 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 one percent of the land area of planet Earth, it is hugely diverse in its geology, and probably just this illustration shows that more than anything, with a variety of colours representing a different 
different geology. Um, this can make my job quite fun, but also difficult, because as you can imagine, each site is unique and each project is unique, and therefore understanding the ground conditions can be difficult. The soft compressible material like Belfast leach is, is known as a, a geohazard. Um, a geohazard is a, is a danger from, from the ground conditions that could pose an impact on human health or the environment and obviously costs and devastation associated with that. Uh, on the right photo is an example of um, a landslide and the left photo is an example of a sinkhole. Um, these pop up time and time again on the news um, from, from different countries around the world. And there's also evidence, although not on this scale, um, of, of landslides and sinkholes happening within, within Ireland. Um, therefore, again, this just emphasizes the need to understand the ground um, and also understand how, how it was formed. We just want to just like to move on now to chat about sustainability um, and help explain why sustainability is important um, to engineers and to the earth itself. With with everything that's going on now in the world, it may be hard. Like when you when you're reading the papers or you're watching the news, it may be hard to think to yourself, "Will the world be a better place this time next year, or will the world be a better place in the next decade?" Um, how can we solve issues such as poverty? Can we resolve gender inequality um, and halt climate change all in the next 12 years? Well, the government says we can um, and that this is possible. In 2015, at the United Nations um, Climate Change Conference in Paris, uh, all the leaders from around the world got together to come up um, with goals, basically. And these were called the Sustainable Development Goals, and the aim is that they would be achieved by 2030. And here they are. So the Sustainable Development Goals aim to achieve a more sustainable future and a, and a better planet. They recognize that, that ending poverty must go hand in hand with building economic growth, and also it tackles issues such as, like social issues such as health, um, job opportunities, whilst challenging, uh, whilst also tackling climate change and environmental concerns. As an engineer, I believe it is essential that in my work and in the work of my company, that we align ourselves with these sustainable development goals um, and help achieve them. This leads me on to one of the most significant sustainable local projects within Northern Ireland, which is the Conswater uh, Community Greenway, which, which could have been, this could have been a standalone flood alleviation scheme and a separate urban regeneration model. However, these were combined together in, in one project, um, an award-winning project that, that gave uh, the people of East Belfast long, long and positive benefits. It delivered significant upgrade to quality, safety and the vibrancy of East Belfast. It also helped support local community, communities and economic development, whilst also cleaning up the local, the local rivers and helping the economy. Um, I'm just going to show a short video clip on this. It would be good for the environment if it was cleaned up at me. It would be very scenic. It is a complete mess and there is such a lot of potential down there. It used to be an adventure for us, this river. And I would love for the kids to experience the simple and innocent stuff that we did in it as well. It'll bring the people of the area back together. It will put the heart back in East Belfast. My response to the big lottery is one word. Yes! I mean it!
I'm delighted to be able to welcome you all to this very special event, which celebrates the completion of the Collinswater Community Greenway. This is just a culmination of years of hard work and it's produced one of the best and nicest great right across Northern Ireland. Without the local community's involvement, it wouldn't have happened in the same way. People wouldn't feel ownership of it. They wouldn't love it in the way that it is already being loved. Uh, and we're just incredibly proud at the Big Lottery Fund to support such an amazing project. I just uh, get out at lunch for a quick walk and it's great just to get out across to the park. Um, I use it for work every day and I've only started this summer using it and it's great. The roads are busy, they're dangerous and this can distress you and just nice to be in nature. We just love, we come out two hours every day mm -hmm. for a walk, it's lovely. And it's lovely to see the wildlife and everything, the trees, it's lovely. Uh, good for the mind, good for everything, really is. To see the scale of this, to see the quality of it, to see the numbers of people from right across Belfast and using this, does my heart the world of good. Um, so basically, um, that's, that's me finished. I would just like to say thanks again for everyone coming tonight. And we all know that it's too late now to save Dippy, but I believe that my contribution as an engineer can help to shape a better world. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks very much, Ryan. Is that going to blind you yeah. if you stand there? Um, thank you. That was fantastic. I loved that video at the end. I knew about the Greenway, but I didn't know quite so much about it, so that was fantastic. Um, thanks for lovely demos as well. No problem. Does Still standing. Free toilet roll for anybody in the audience. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a Andrax as well, so you know. I know, it wasn't like Jeremy earlier who got this from Lytle. He went and got the good stuff from Andrax. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Yes, there's loads of questions at the back already. Go ahead. Thank you for your presentation. I'm wondering how you take into account future risk of flooding in particular whenever you're undertaking your work for development and design. Yeah, I suppose um, that's a, that's a fair, fair question. I suppose, like, not to look at the Conswater Community Greenway again, but one thing that's probably missed from that project was that the main thing behind it was that it, I think it was 1,200 homes were protected by floods. I think 2007 saw the worst flooding in East Belfast. And that sort of sparked the idea behind the engineering with this project, um, with like flood defense walls, etc. So I, th I think that's one thing that's important. Like that project is fantastic for what it's done for people's health and economic development, etc. But the underlying principles of it were from an, from an engineering point of view. If hopefully that explains a little. Jim, very enthusiastic nodding at you, Ryan. I can see you're from here. Uh, thank you for that question. Do we have another question at the back? Yeah. Just about Lean Tower of Pisa. Uh, they were saying recently it's actually starting to lose its lean. Is that because of uh, geotechnical uh, projects or is that just from nature? It's kind of balancing out. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a, a fair question. Uh, when I was chatting about the, the 13 uh, specialist 
geotechnical engineers that got together in, I think it was 1991, did I say, and it actually took 10 years for them basically to restabilize Pisa and get it um, to reopen. Um, how, how they went about doing that was basically, I, I wish I actually had a, a model, to, to sh another model to show you, but um, it won't work with toilet roll. They actually uh, re removed some of that soft material from underneath Pisa whilst actually placing weight on the other end so that it wouldn't completely collapse during that temporary works. And they pretty much put, if you can imagine, large ropes over it and pulled it into place. That's sort of the basic principle behind um, how they managed to straighten it. And I think uh, there was a report that came out recently and there was stuff in the news about Pisa basically losing, losing its lean. Um, and I think they, they believe that for the next 200 years, Pisa will remain, remain safe and maybe more. So you can, you can still all visit it. <laughs> um, I think there's someone else with their hand up at the back there. Do we have another question? No, we've got another question here at the front. Do you have a question? Yeah, I'll we'll get you down the microphone. Yep. How cold is it in the Arctic? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, what's your, your guess, mate? How cold I is it in the Antarctic? From, from watching Planet Earth, I can tell you it's pretty pretty cold. <laughs> but we need an exact Jess number. Jess, who's up next, will help will help answer answer that for you. That'll be a really good question for her. We she's going to talk gonna all about it. We were actually going to ask the question about the lean and tear pizza and was running with what going to uh, uh, suction or fix the uh, base of it, like you know. So, yeah, no so question. yeah, no, yeah, no worries. Thank you. Do we have another question for Ryan? Yeah, quite a few at the back. Go on. Um, my question would be, um, the talk between uh, doing a bridge between Northern Ireland and Scotland, the likelihood of that being possible with the, the just basically the RAC in between, it. How, how likely would it happen? Would it be politically or engineering? Uh, engineering. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> we'll let, Ryan, we'll let you I'll answer. We'll, we'll let you answer first. both if you can speak on behalf on, uh, of our parties and also <laughs> as an engineer. Uh, <laughs> I'm not getting the, the political sides of things, um, but yeah, like. <laughs> like anything, it's 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 definitely possible. There's no, like, there's other major infrastructure across the world that have connected different countries, uh, through bridges and tunnels, etc. So, uh, to be honest, I, I don't know the extent of what it would take to do that, but it could be possible. Yeah. Thanks. That sounds. You sounded quite hopeful there. I'll, I'll try and design it. To yeah. Do it, yeah. well. We all heard him saying it. To be <laughs> fair. You see on Facebook there was a post going around saying if we connected them we could be known as the Islands of Crack, so I think that's a pretty good idea. <laughs> uh, does anybody else have a question? I think there's somebody towards the back had put their hand up after that question, but they've, they've got stage fright. Um, in terms of the soft ground, Ryan, how do you actually investigate it? Yeah, um, well, first of all, before before you're looking at a project or just taking a specific site somewhere in Northern Ireland, you would use the likes of the information provided by the Geological Society of Northern Ireland because they have published data from years of experience. So that would be your first sort of basis for your baseline data. And then you would start looking about actually investigating the ground at that specific site. So that would include pretty much drilling into the ground and assessing the thicknesses of different layers of material and until eventually getting to bedrock. Um, in some cases, you would continue drilling on through bedrock, depending on what your foundation design might be um, and obviously what the project is. There's, there's also a, a variety of different site investigations. And uh, there's been a big push as well lately to non-intrusive investigations using the likes of seismic refraction surveys or 2D resistivity, et cetera. So, um, it's a field continuing, continuing to grow. And I know we, we saw that brilliant video there of the Conswater Greenway. Are there other local infrastructure projects that are going on in Northern Ireland now or ones that are upcoming? Yeah, I suppose I can just touch on uh, the projects that, that my company, Arab, have, be, have been involved in, l like the Conswater Community Greenway. This was an, another one um, 
the, the designs evolving for that is the, the Belfast Transport Hub, um, which is basically, basically regen regenerating the area of behind the Europa and the, the bus, Great Victoria uh, bus centre and train station as we know it. And that would be, I suppose, the, the sustainability element behind that is that it's a huge modal shift away from vehicular cars, etc and then for hopefully reducing carbon footprint, et cetera, by getting le less people off the roads and using more public transport, so. Look forward, you can come back and tell us about that at, the next, at one of our next events. Uh, can we please get a massive round of applause for Ryan Murray? Thank you.